This is a rotor arm for a car's ignition system and it's 3D printed. You can see here that it's actually made of a few different parts. These yellow ones are embedded in the body. Today I'm going to show you how to embed parts like this in your 3D prints with a couple of different methods. There are timestamps in the description so you can find what you need. So on a working rotor arm, the body would be made of moulded plastic and these inserts would have been made out of copper and steel. It's worth noting that we can actually print in copper and a range of steels, either with the FX10 here or with the Metal X on the other side of the show. But since this is just a proof of concept, we've printed the body out of Onyx, which is our nylon-based material, and PLA uh, just to keep our costs down. As you can see, they're completely enclosed, so they can't actually be removed. Now, we achieved this by pausing the print partway through in multiple locations to embed the parts. And the software that we use to do this is Markforge Eiger. So you'll need to select the layer that you want to pause on, uh, and when you do, make sure that the top of the insert will be perfectly level with the layer that you're on. When the pause happens, you can simply remove the print bed from the printer and then press the insert into the parts. So removing the print bed mid-print like this doesn't affect the quality of the finished parts, and that's because of a clever location system that's been developed by Mark Forged. When you put the print bed back, it will simply click into place and it will still be within a few microns of where you took it. Now for this rotor arm, there were two parts embedded, one in the base and one on the top here. So we just repeated the same process again. Remove the print bed, pop the piece in, and then put the print bed back, that simple. And there's the finished part. The supports just pull away and the surface finish is nice and smooth across both materials. The 3D printer that we used for this process was the Mark Forge Mark II, but the same process is applicable to other Mark Forge 3D printers as well. Now, there are a couple of other methods of embedding parts in your prints as well. Let's take a look. Another very simple way of embedding parts in a 3D print is to leave a pocket. So after the print is complete, in this case, we've got a nut, you can just slot that in, leave a gap for a bolt, and there you have it, really simple. So you can very easily do the same thing with magnets, you can do it with steel bars for strength, uh, you can do it with nuts, bolts, and honestly, hundreds of other off-the-shelf parts that come in all sorts of different forms. So the final method is using threaded inserts like this and pressing them into the part. The trick with these heat inserts is to leave a slightly undersized gap for them in the part. So what a lot of engineers do is they will just pop one of these on the end of a soldering iron and press it into the part after it's finished printing. When the plastic cools, it'll form a strong bond, allowing you to use metal threads in the part. So you can see here, I've got a lot of different types of these inserts. Some of them are self-tapping, some of them are barbs, and they're very, very easy to use, really simple off-the-shelf parts. So all three of these methods are standard practice and they're very, very common in CNC machine shops for making and fixtures, but also on factory floors and for end use parts. So let's look at some real world examples. Now this is a machining fixture. It was used for machining steel. It's gonna have thousands of cycles. And it's got a couple of nuts inserted in the base there. Uh, it's also got self-tapping inserts to hold it to the uh, base plates of the machine. That makes it really easy to remove the top and insert the part you're working on. It's secure, it's strong and really easy to use. So here's another real world example. This is a CNC machining fixture that was created by Aluminium Special Products Limited. And this is used for aerospace parts. So you can see that the inserts are being used for two purposes. One is to hold the part inside the jig, and the other to hold the jig inside the CNC machine. We've actually got a lot more examples from Aluminium Special Products and other companies using 3D printers. So subscribe to the channel and like the video to see more. So big thanks to Neil Brown Engineering who sent over the CAD files for this proof of concept rotor arm. You can also find our free 3D printing guides and other resources in the video description, along with more examples like this one. If you like 3D printing, don't forget to subscribe to Mark3D to see more videos and stories. And finally, here are some other videos that might be interesting to you.